Let's solve this differential equation, and as you can see, based on the look right here, it seems like we are dealing with an exact equation, right? However, we must do the check. So, if this is indeed exact, it means that we have a function and we call that to be capital F, so that this right here represents the partial of f with respect to t, okay? And right here, it will represent the partial of that function with respect to y. And now we have to do the mixed partial to make sure that if the mixed partials are the same, then you know this right here, it does represent the total differential of the capital F. So let's go ahead and do it. Right here, I will have to differentiate this with respect to y. So we put on the partial with respect to y of this. We have e to the t times y plus t e to the t times y, like this. In this case, y is the variable, t is the constant, Right here, when we differentiate e to the t times y, look at y, the derivative y is just 1, right? So we just have e to the t right here. And for the second term here, same situation. This is just y to the first power. When we differentiate that, we just get 1. So we just get that plus t e to the t's power. And this is it. And now, we are going to differentiate this with respect to t, because this was for the y already. We are doing the mixed partial. So let's go ahead and do that. Right here, let me put down t e to the t's power, and we have plus 2. Okay, in the t world, t is the variable, so let's go ahead and differentiate this. This is the product of two functions, right? t times e to the t's power. So be sure we use the product rule. And the product rule I want to use is, we will keep the first function, which is t, and we multiply by the derivative of the second, which is e to the t's power. And then we add the second function, which is just e to the t's power. And we multiply by the derivative of the first, uh, first function, which is just 1. And the derivative of 2 is just 0. And this is what we have. If you would like, you can rewrite this a little bit. You can put down e to the t times 1, which is just e to the t. And then this is just plus t e to the t's power, which you see, they are the same. That means this is indeed an exact equation. So now let's go ahead and solve this. So here's the deal. We can use either one to begin with, okay? It doesn't matter. And in my opinion, use a shorter one, use the easier one, the process will be easier. So I'm going to use this right here first. Since we know this is an exact equation already, so this right here, we do know it represents the partial of some function f. That function f does exist, okay? with respect to y. So let me put that down first. Partial of f with respect to y is equal to t e to the t's power plus 2. And our goal is to figure out what that capital F is. Well, now let's go ahead and integrate both sides. This time we have to integrate it with respect to y. So let's put down dy on both sides. Okay. On the left hand side, we will have the f right here. And this is equal to, this is t times e to the t's power, but in the y world, this is just a constant. So the integral of this is just t e to the t's power y. We just put a y right next to it, right? And when we integrate 2 in the y world, it's just going to be 2y, so plus 2y. Well, after we integrate, we have to put a constant, right? But in the y world, we have to put down g of t, because t is technically a constant in the y world. And keep in mind, the function f, it's a multivariable function. It's a function involves both t and y. So right here, I'll put down plus g of t, just some function in terms of t. And if you differentiate this real quick with respect to y, you will get this. And now, this is pretty much the form of f, but we still have to figure out what's g of t. We can do so by taking the partial of f with respect to t. Let's do that. Let me put this down on both sides. Because once we differentiate this with respect to t, you see we have to match with that. So let's go ahead and make this happen. Right here, you see we will have partial of f with respect to t. This is equal to, here we have t times e to the t's power times y. Y is a constant. So let's put that down first if you don't mind, okay? And I'm just going to be looking at t times e to the t's power and do the derivative for that, okay? We have to use the product rule. So let me keep the first function, which is t, times the derivative of the second, 
the derivative of e to the t is just e to the t. And now we are going to put down plus at the second function, which is just e to the t. And we multiply by the derivative first, which is just 1, right? Derivative t is 1. And you see, I put down the constant all the way in the front. Later on, I will distribute. So that's pretty much it. Next, the derivative 2y in the t world is just 0, so that's it, right? And at the end, we have to put down plus the derivative of g. Well, g is the function of t, so it will be g prime of t, like this. Okay, now you see, we have to set this equal to what we have in the beginning, which is e to the t times y plus t e to the t times y. And guess what? If you look at this right here, if you distribute real quick, you have t e to the t, and we put the y at the end, and we put down this plus, and we put the y at the end as well, so let's put down this as e to the t times y, and we have plus g prime of t, right? This is equal to that. This and that match already. As you can see, g prime of t has to be what? This is like plus zero, right? That means we must have g prime of t is equal to zero, and we have to now figure out g of t. Of course, you can just go ahead and integrate both sides with respect to t. Well, you can get g of t. The integral of zero in any world is just a constant, so it's just that constant c, and this is pretty much it. All right, here's the deal. At the end, when you write down the answer, you can write it down as f of t of y, like this equals to the constant. Let me put this down as c1, okay? Just put a constant all the way to the right hand side like this. Anyways, at the end, I'm going to write this down. This is the function f, right? Which is t times e to the t's power times y plus 2y. And g of t is the constant. But as I said, we'll put the constant onto the right hand side. So just make this equal to c. And this is it. This is the general solution, and we are done for the general solution for that. However, we do have an initial value, so you see that t is equal to 0, y will be negative 1. Use this information to figure out what c is. So let's go ahead, put down 0 into t, so we have 0 times e to the 0's power, and y is negative 1, so let's put this down times negative 1 for the y, and then plus 2 times negative 1, this will give us c, right? This right here is just 0, and 2 times negative 1, so of course negative 2, so that means c is equal to negative 2. At the end, what's the answer? Well, c is negative 2 right here, right? So I'll write this down for you guys. t e to the t's power y plus 2y equals to negative 2, and here is the answer that we want to get. That's it.